Oh, it's kosher. We, uh, whatever. It's, yeah, but if you don't keep kosher, then to you, it doesn't really, it's not, it's not important enough. So, right? Same, the same issue. I think I should, what do I do? Suppose I go to some of the, the reform uh, cemetery. So I go over there and like do something? <laughs> talking about eating, e eating the food. If oh. someone that doesn't keep kosher, oh, okay. someone that doesn't, so when they tell you, yeah, it's kosher, it doesn't mean it's really kosher. We had a story where um, we had a relative that wasn't this before my time, but it's a story in my family. They said that they were, uh, they weren't sure if the spouse was Jewish. They were getting married. We, we, we always have doubted that. They said, oh, yes. Sure. Anyway, it was a wedding. It was in Washington. So they invited my grandmother and my grandparents to come. They said, um, oh, it's going to be the same caterer as the one that catered the Camp David Accords. And Menachem Bacon was there. And it's got to be kosher. It's... Anyway, it turns out it was the same caterer. And Menachem Bacon ate TV dinners. So it wasn't kosher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, Maidrush. What are the Kutin? What's their source? that they don't bury their, um, their miscarriages. He said that they would just either leave it in the house buried or they would, or an animal would, would run off with it. What, they, they follow the text of the Torah. Where are they getting this from? So it says, Leisasik, they, they quote a passage, Leisasik Volreyach, you can't move the, the boundary of your friend. that that the, the boundary was there from the earlier generations in your inheritance. In other words, the, 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 the land was divided. Don't move the boundaries of the, of the inheritance. Now, what they learn is when it says boundaries, it's not referring to boundaries of markers of where the person's property is. It's actually referring to graves. That graves of... of parents or, or ancestors should not be moved or should not be um, should not be um, pushed away. But who has this grave? Only someone that has an inheritance. Because it says the ones that you've received in an inheritance, you shouldn't move. If he doesn't have an inheritance, he doesn't get a cemetery place either. So, because he was a miscarriage, he would not inherit. He doesn't have a burial spot either. So that's their source. Now, it could be there are other ways of learning this Gemara. This is the way that this is the way that uh, Rashi is learning it. Okay. Now the next case is in the next halacha is Namanam Laimar Kavarno. They're trusted to say if they buried the, the miscarriage or not. Kumar asks, This is a famous issue with the Kutin. It says in the Torah that you should not put a stumbling block in front of a blind person. We understand that to mean that you shouldn't cause someone else to sin. That would be a stumbling block. Say, oh yeah, this is kosher, you can eat it. Or, yeah, or something like that. And it's really not. It's actually a machlekes if you actually put a stumbling block in front of a blind man, if that's a prohibition of his neighbor receiving misha, because for us, it's all figurative. And amongst the, the kutim, the kutim did it different. They said, it's only literal. It's not figurative. A stumbling block, you, you're allowed to cause someone to sin, as long as you didn't do the sin. Problem is, why are we trusting them to say that they buried the uh, Nephilim in this place? They don't hold the Vlifnei Valisi to Michshel, so to them, they're 100% allowed to cause you to sin. They could tell you any story they want, and it's not a, it's, there's no prohibition there. Um, Rabavo, Rabavo says, Bakayan Aymitsham. No, we're talking about where a Kuti, that's a Kayan, is standing there. I don't know how there's a Kuti Kayan standing there, but I guess they had Kayan that kept the, uh, the laws. It can't be a descendant from. Uh, from Aaron. 
but they must have had a Kuti Kayan that was standing there. The Gemara says, Vidil Makayan Tamiyo, but maybe he was a Kayan that was Tami anyway. What's the proof that, uh, that he's following that, uh, that, this, that there was no burial there? Maybe this Kayan was Tami, and that's why he's standing there. We hold that if he's Tami, he can't stand there anyway. But he said, okay, the Naka Chuma Biyadi, because he's holding Chuma in his hand. He's holding a Chuma sandwich. And he can't be eating that if he's, uh, uh, if he's Tami. The Dilma Chuma Tameyahi. Maybe it was Chuma Tameyah. We hold you don't eat Chuma Tameyah. <laughs> There's no he's eating it. So I guess they also have that Chuma Tameyah. We hold that it needs to be burnt. They, they also hope that it would need to be burnt. Ihachi, my lamema. So one second. So why do you come along and tell me that we trust what he says? It's not what he says. There's a Kayan standing there that's, there's a whole other story here that he left out. And this is, uh, this is uh, the, the fact that he's trusted has nothing to do with the fact that with why you're allowed to go there. You're going there because there's a Kayan eating chumas standing there. We could have thought, Oh, yeah, we know that there's a Kayan there. And they hold that it's not Tamei. But how do you know that they really understand the difference between what age the miscarriage needs to be buried? Maybe they're not experts in the age. They say, oh, it was too late. It doesn't need to be buried. It was an early miscarriage. They don't understand the 40 days from conception or whatever it is. So maybe we can't trust them, the fact that he's standing there. It's that no, that we do trust him. That, that they do understand the, um, the age of the, of the fetus when it needs to be buried. Okay. Now, Manamala Behema, they're trusted to say that an animal has not, has not given birth, uh, uh, has, given birth, has given birth already once, and therefore the following animal is in the Bachar. The Gemara asks, the Lestalif Nebel is in the The Samaritans don't hold of. The, fig- the figurative translation, <laughs> don't put a stumbling block in front of a blind man. And therefore, they could lie to you, and, uh, and there's no prohibition for them. Isn't there another prohibition against lying? Maybe they translate it differently. It's a good question. How are they supposed to, how are they lying? How are they allowed to lie? It's a good question. There's the trophies, you're already on two. I'm Rabbi Baraba, I'm Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Baraba is the famous student of Rabbi Yechanan. We're talking about we are, you're buying the firstborn, which could be a firstborn. Rabbi Baraba was the one that, Rabbi, uh, that reviewed his teachings every 30 days in front of Rabbi Yechanan. And Rabbi Yechanan like checked it over. And, um, he's, he's, Sharing the wool of this firstborn, which he's claiming isn't a firstborn, and is also working it. Now, in the Torah, it says that you're not allowed to share the wool or work a firstborn. So we can see that the fact that he's saying it's not a firstborn is the truth, because or else he wouldn't be working it. And he, wouldn't be, he keeps the Torah, at least the biblical Torah. But he just thinks that you're allowed to cause others to sin. So the fact that he right now is working it, is working the animal that means that he's he's um he really holds that it's not a firstborn. So, what are you telling me that what's the chiddush here? Are we thought you're telling me a chiddush. Could have thought that maybe he doesn't understand that if there was a miscarriage first, at what type of miscarriage is going to be considered a firstborn, and then this is the second the second born, maybe he doesn't understand that. The Kamashmala, no, he does understand this. And, and that's why we're trusting him. Namanamal Atsian, Altsi and Khulu, they're trusted to say where the markings of a grave are. Rafa Gav the Midura Bananhu, even though that's a rabbinic law to mark the grave, but keeping the Ksiva Mizar Zahiri Bay. Since it's written, they're careful. The Ksiv Ra Atzamada Mubanat Sitsian. This is a Pasuk in Yefesco when it speaks about the war of Doig and Mug, Doig, the king of Magai, that, um, that uh, it says afterwards that we're going to spend six or seven months burying all the dead of Magai. Um, it's a, it's a, 
and uh, afterwards, and, and then it, it, it continues. It says, and you'll mark off all the graves that you that you buried. So over there it says that you'll mark off the graves. That means that there that it says in the pasuk that you're supposed to mark the graves. Now, this is an interesting source that the Gemara brings here because we thought we usually think that they keep only the five books, the, the, the Torah. Would you? Would you? <coughs> that's something that's written in Tanakh, they're also keeping. Which is very interesting because in Tanakh it discusses the Kutu. Yes, they're mentioned there, uh, in a, but nevertheless they're accepting it. Okay. But they're not trusted for overhanging trees. Schachis. What are the schachis? The Tanan says in the Mishnah, Eloi Schachis. Following our schachis, schachis is like the word schachis. Ilan Ames Chalaret is a tree that's hanging over the ground. Now, what would happen is if there was a, a grave that's, if you have a tree that has, that it's not, um, it doesn't have a lot of uh, foliage. The, the branches are spread out and it's like loose, uh, <coughs> open. So each branch would have an independent oil <coughs> overhang over. Uh, so that that means if there's a grave that's buried under one branch, it doesn't continue over to the next branch. Now, you can't trust a, a kuti to say that the grave was buried under that branch and not under the other one. You can't trust them. Why? Because the kuti do, doesn't know <coughs> that a suffix is prohibited if there's a doubt. Whenever there's a doubt, he thinks it's permitted. So if there's anything that is a doubt and he has to verify which one it is, is it this one, is it that one, he holds automatically it's permitted. So you can't trust the Kuti to tell you to verify which one it was, which, which overhang it was. Price. You know, you know it, 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 his, it could be this is their, their we hold Safik to Raisa Lachumra, right? But that's a machlekes, the Rambam and the Rash, but if Tzavik the Raisa Lachumra is min ha-tayra and min When I, when I have a Tzavik the Raisa and a machmer, who tells me that I need to be machmer when I see that? In other words, did the Torah prohibit, the Torah said that certain things are prohibited. In a case where it's a doubt, did the Torah prohibit that as well? Or, or did the Torah only prohibit things that are definite? Now, what do I do when I when I have this doubt? So it's the Machlekes, the Rambam, and the Rash, but one of them says that it's biblically prohibited to violate a potential biblical prohibition. The other one says, no, that's only a rabbinic prohibition. The Kutim don't hold of this whole thing. They hold that it's permitted. If there's a doubt, it's permitted. So if there's any doubt, you can't trust them like that. I don't remember the Rambam holds. I don't remember the Rambam of the Rosh. Really on the trees? We're not sure. Yeah, what's going on with the trees is that the 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 um the branches are spread out in ways that not every branch <laughs> is an overhang over the over the grave. So you're asking the kuti which branch is the one that has the grave under it, and he tells you you can't trust him. Because for him, if there's a doubt which one, he just says that it's all good. So you can't trust him. Right, these are stones that are hanging out from uh Walls, there were protrusions that would that would stick out. And they'd build walls. Uh, not every stone matched, and it would stick out. Stones that are sticking out of the fence, and you have the same issue over there. That sometimes there's several stones sticking out. You don't know under which stone they buried the the, the grave. You can't trust them. Besapras. What about a besapras? Besapras is an area. There's actually three besapras. Main uh, is there's a grave in there that got plowed over, or there's a grave in there that was you don't know where it is. These are areas. I'm Rabbi Yudam Rishmol. Rabbi Yudam Rishmol says, "Mina peachad and beis pras A person can actually blow his way through a beis pras. That means that as he's walking, every step he would blow the dirt away to see if there's a bone there, and he'd be able to continue walking. So it's a big job. Be easier to have those uh, sure. one of those, those lowest uh, uh, the gardeners have. 
you know, the godness that Lord alludes to. So, um, oh, yeah, so we're, we're thinking that it's not going to be Metamim Ba'ayel because it's not a full body. And we're also thinking that it's not going to be Basar that would cut, that would give off that Tuma as well. We only think that the problem is Maga, that you're going to touch it. So if you can dry, avoid it's a, dry bone. it's a dry bone without any flesh on it, so it's going only going to be maga. You think if you blow it away, it's not going to be there. And what about if it's a full bone? I think we think that the bone's crushed anyway. It's a etzem kasaira, a bone. No, whatever size bone it is, if, if it doesn't, it's not going to be mitama ba'il. So. He's going to be able to blow it. Rav Yehuda Barami, Mishmei de Rav Yehuda, Amr Beis HaPrashini de Shistar. Rav Yehuda Barami, in the name of Rav Yehuda, that's the famous Rav Yehuda, the student of Shmuel that we just mentioned before, he says that if there was a Beis HaPras, a, um, a area where this grave is lost, that was trodden upon, Midash, it was, um, it was, threshed, it was, uh, it was walked on. And so then the bones are probably crumbled already and it's going to be fine. It's tar. The Tana, it was also taught, a chirish beis akvaris, someone that plows a beis akvaris, reza is a beis apras. He plows a cemetery, he makes a beis apras. Vad kama, how big is it? How, how much area it would be the beis apras if you plowed over a grave? It says malaymana, to the extent of the uh, as long as the plow would go, so in the field it says mea ama basa basan. It would be a hundred amas, which is four sa. The way we get this measurement is like this: we say that the area of the mishkan is a hundred ama by fifty ama, and that's called a base sasayim. The way they would measure land in those days was by how much seed you would plant in it. So they would measure land by uh, by bushels or, uh, of seed. So a base of sign would be a hundred, a hundred by fifty, that was two saw of seed could be sown in that in that land. So a four saw would be a hundred by a hundred. Right? A hundred by fifty doubled is a hundred by a hundred. You add another thing is so um so that's the area that a base of pras would be. That means that if there was a grave somewhere, so it would be a hundred amas by a hundred amas, the area that you couldn't be able, to, that you have to be careful walking there because that would give off this tumma rabbinically. It could be there were bones in there. We can't. And to go back a little bit, did you say that the um, miscarriages can't have to be um, buried on your property? It doesn't have to be on the property. There was an issue that the Kutum would bury it in their houses. That was one opinion. And then there was another opinion that said they didn't bury it. But, well, my yeah. question is then, um, if it's a merchant that doesn't have land, maybe that's why they, they bury it in their house. Oh, in the house. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Interesting. Is, is that, is Today it's uh, buried in the cemetery. <coughs> No, I'm saying it's given to the the Kabbalah Kaddish to take care of it at whatever age, or whatever. Does that mean that a Cohen can't go in that house? Yeah. Yeah. I read this story. This lady the other day, she kept her husband with her for ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Collected one hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars in his uh, uh -huh. Social Security. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Maybe she was a good. I don't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Ashes of a, you know, somebody. Yeah. Some people have it in home. Right. Right. Someone <coughs> mentioned over here that it doesn't contaminate the. The Dafyani share is not a halacha share, but someone mentioned that it doesn't contaminate the um, the house. And then regarding touching it, it was, it was, we had to hear different opinions. <coughs> okay. It's going to move the dust, like uh, we talked about the right. right? Right. And the bugs to sit down. Are human remains when they're burned, or they can be like not coming, or they just come yeah, that is that probably biblically, but rabbinically, there could be other laws that the. So Rabbi Yaisi Aimer Chamish. Rabbi Yaisi says that it's 
Fivesa. Blame the Hemni. The Gemara says, do not believe to, to say where a base of Pras is for Hatanya. But we have a Brisa that says like this. If there's a field that there's a grave there, we don't know where the grave is. So you can, the Kuti is trusted to say that there's no grave there or, or where it is or whatever. Because he's, he's testifying about the grave. And the grave itself, he, he holds that there's Tumma from a grave. He just holds that if it's lost, but he, but there is an actual grave and he knows where it is. So he's trusted. He's also trusted to say that there is no grave under that tree. Why are you telling me that you can trust him? We have a Bryce that says you can trust him. Rabbi Yechanan says we're talking about where he's walking across the field all over. And so therefore we know that he's actually holds it himself. That there's no, um, there's no grave there. So what's the chiddush? If he's walking everywhere, what are you telling me? Could it think it's possible for you to think that maybe he left out one strip where he's walking that he's been avoiding the whole time, and he's showing you that there's no grave. Look, I'm even walking on it. He's walking back and forth, but really he's leaving out one area that only he knows, and uh, maybe you can't trust him. Because it could be he's uh, he's avoiding a certain strip of land, but Kamash Malan, that you don't you, you can't trust him. Good question. Eventually, isn't it the case that the rabbi said they're not Jewish? Sure. Yeah. And was there an event, or was it just an accumulation of these these kinds of issues that would have caused the rabbis to say? You know, That's a good question. What, I think what happened was they found them worshiping an idol. <laughs> And then they, they, after that, they determined that they weren't Jewish. The question is, when we learn these Gemaras, are we learning before they found the idol, after they found the idol? At what point is there any relevance to this afterwards? Do we say that if it's anything that they keep, you could trust them? We do trust non-Jews in things that they would be, that would be important to them. Woman uh, Maram Nase. We've had so many incidents with Kuti and we must right. all say that. And the question is, at what point in history was this mission written? Right. Right. Okay, Zakal, this is Zerul, Zakal, I see my, what's it coming to include? You can't trust a guy for Tchumen, Tchum Shabbos. They can't do that, which means that if they would tell you that the edge of the city is here and you can walk until that such and such a tree that's 2,000 miles out of the city, uh, you can't trust them because they don't hold up Tchum Shabbos because Tchum Shabbos is only rabbinic. And also Yayanesa. You can't trust them to say if a guy touched the wine or because that was only a rabbinic decree. The guy touched the line. You know, no, 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 so, yeah, we, the, the Gemara throws you around from all, all over the place. Haraya Kesem al Basara, a woman that sees a stain on her actual body. So, Kneged Beis Atarpa. If it's the opposite, the, her private area, then it's Tameya. That's considered that the blood came from that area, and she's coming. It's like Kneged Beis Atarpa, but if it's not opposite that private area, then Tahira, then she's pure. We're going to go through a list of different parts of the body of where possibly the stain had come from there or it didn't come from there. If it's found on her ankle or on the, her big toe, then it's tomato. Al shaika, it's on her thigh, val I guess the, is that the lower thigh? If it's between the legs, then it's tomato. If it's on the outside of the legs, then it's tahira. 
Well, it's the other mikana mikana. Let's say it's in the front or the back. They call this the sides. That means the sides of the legs here, it's the front or the back. So then it's Tahira as well. Ras al Chalukah, let's say she finds it on her robe, a gown. Minachagar Lamata, if it's below the belt, then it's Tmeya. Minachagar Lamayla, if it's above the belt, then it's Tahira. Ras al Besiyad Shal Chalukah, let's she finds it on the sleeve of her gown. Imagia Kenegad Besitar, if the sleeve was long enough to reach that area, then it's Tmeya. All of this seems pretty logical. We already have the uh, the rule, you know. Let's say it was a gown that she removes at night and she uses it as a, as a blanket. Mm-hmm. People were cold. They would put gowns, they would pile it up or whatever. So as a as a blanket. So then it's every any area where it's found, even if it's like on the collar, it's going to be tmeya. Because when she's sleeping, she moves the blanket around. It goes this way, it goes that way. You can't know where exactly, because she went to sleep, that this was on the top of her and that was on the bottom. That doesn't, it's not a proof. The same as with a kerchief. So that, that, even though it's over her head, but it could come off and she finds a stain on it afterwards and say, hey, it must be from her head. No, it could be even from uh, Nida. Amr Shmuel. Shmuel gives a statement here that the Gemara is going to challenge later, but before that, um, we we go through a, a whole discussion of the meaning of it, and afterwards we're going to come out that it's not exactly what we thought. Shmuel says, If a, a woman examines the ground that she's about to sit on, she looks down, she sees the ground's clean. Then she sits down on the ground, when she gets up, she sees, there was there's blood where she was sitting. So she's Tahira. She's pure. Even though it's obvious, with, right? Shinemar, because it says in the Pasak, the Bisara, in her flesh. Ashatagish Bibisara, she has to feel the blood coming out. To Masnita is only if she felt it, if she had a sensation of blood leaving her. She didn't feel it. Where it says one second, Hai Bibsara mi baile shamatama nimba kibachutz. You learned that, you used that pasuk already to teach me that halacha, that a woman is tummy even before the blood comes out, if it's that she's tummy even when the blood is inside her, as long as it's left the uterus, she's already tummy. It says, Why does it say in her flesh? That teaches me this other halacha, that she has to feel it. But you still need the bsara. We used it for something else. The basar of that if she sees blood that comes out together with skin or other types of flesh that come out, and that inside it is blood. So what was touching the the area was not blood, was flesh, but contained inside the piece that was that fell out was was blood. He said that that's tar. Where it says tartish mamina, you learn two things from it. Itashima. Umar gets away with that so easy. That's like, uh, how, you, how do you do that? Um, it must mean that that the Bsara actually, it's not the extra word, it actually teaches it to me from the actual translation that it needs to be actually sent as a sensation in her flesh itself. So if it, there's something blocking between her flesh and the blood, then it's then it won't be uh, won't be coming. Tashma, come and come and listen. Isha, she she it's a woman that's urinating. and she sees blood on on in the on the floor or on the, in the toilet. So Reb Meir Aimer, Reb Meir says, "Imay medas tmeya." If she was urinating while she's standing up, then she's telling me why. Because we say that the blood, that the urine, because of the abnormal position that she's in, um, the urine pushed itself into other areas of her body and came back out with, with blood. However, Rim Yeshevis, which is the natural way that she would urinate, the Haira, because that blood must have come from within, in, the, in the urine. In the urine, there was blood. 
could be what happens. Infection, I don't know. So, but it's not, it's not, it's not neither. Umar says, hey, we're, now we're challenging this. We're, we're challenging Shmuel, really, by these prices. What's going on? Ida Agisha. Shmuel said she needs to have a sensation. If she doesn't have the sensation, then she's tar. If she had a sensation, then Yeshiva Samai Tara. Then why is she tar when she's sitting? El Alav, the Agisha must be that she didn't have a sensation. And Uktaniye Medis Tameya. And it says without a sensation, she's still tummy. We see Shmuel's not, not correct. We see that the sensation is not, uh, is not significant here because. Otherwise, how do you have this contrast of sitting or standing if the whole I- issue is sensation? My answer is Lailam Dagisha. Really, there was a sensation. And the sensation was, un- <coughs> was unrecognized because she thinks that it was the sensation of urinating. That, that also has a sensation. So she wasn't able to feel exactly it's like the dentist uh, shaking the cheek when he's putting in the needle. So you don't you feel. A, there is a sensation going on, but you're feeling something else. You don't feel that. Uh, it's a distraction. So, a medes, if she's standing, other, those are two words there, my Gemara, probably yours as well. Is it printed together? Other may reply. You have it separate, or mine is together. It looks like a dry me. A medes, other may reply, lamaka. Uh, if she's standing, then the urine would return back to the uterus and it would bring out because of the abnormal position that she's in. However, but really, there is a sensation. You see, over here, you can't claim that there's no sensation because there's other sensations going on that are distracting her from the, that sensation. Come and listen. Let's say there's a Examination cloth that's under the pillow. Or car could mean a mat. Uh, uh, what, how do they translate it there? Pillow. Okay, good. And she was using this examination cloth to examine herself. But there's now there's blood on it. So, im ugle, if the stain is round, so then it's tar, then it's pure. Why? Because the way a, a louse or a mosquito or something would be killed would be squished. And there would be a, a red uh, stain there and a round, uh, in a circular. Uh, but if it's a, a line, so then it's tummy. Now, line is because if she would be doing an examination, so it would, the blood would be drawn in a line. That's how. So then the blood comes from her. So what's going on? Did she feel it? Then why is... It pure if it's a circle. It must be that she didn't feel it. You see, she becomes tummy even without feeling it. What's Shmuel saying? You have to feel it. It's clear that she's tummy without feeling it. The says, like, really, she did feel it. The only thing is, she was distracted because she thinks that it was the feeling of the cloth that's entering inside of her, coming out. <coughs> that that's a distraction and she... So really, there is a sensation. And the only question is, is it from her? If it's drawn, then we know it's from her. It's in a line. But if it's a circle, then we say that it came from the louse. Toshima, in olden days, uh, it was much more uh, common in life. Someone said in Russia, he remembers, he looked at a bed once. It was like staring at it, so the whole bed was moving like this. They were just like, you know, a, a, like a lot of insects just like moving, you just, like the whole thing was moving. Anyway, I don't know if that was a common thing or uh, uh, I heard they can't do it like this. So, anyway, you see blood on a cloth, it doesn't mean that it's from the woman, it could be. From... Okay, it's an extreme uh, example. Tashima. This is after relations, and they're doing an examination, and he has a cloth, and she has a cloth. If there's blood on his cloth that he's, he checked himself to see if there was blood after the relations, so then the blood must have come from her. How did it come? How did he get it? Well, from the relations. It got on him. 
So that means that there was blood there during the relations, and they have to bring a carbon. Nimtal shala, but if there was blood on her her cloth, then not necessarily was the blood there when they were together. Asiyon, if it's immediate after the relations, then then they have to bring a carbon in the tummy. Both nimtal shala, lacherzman, but if she finds it after you know, a certain amount of time, <coughs> then tameim misafik and tamein a carbon, then there. He's tummy misafik. She's tummy. She found it, but he's tummy misafik, and they have to bring a carbon, and they they're exempt from the carbon because it could be it came later. Mercy's hechi dami. What's going on? Ida If was there a sensation? So lachas manam right to him in a carbon. When did she have the sensation? When they were together. So why is she exempt? Why are they exempt from a carbon? She's tummy. El lav delayagisha. Must be that there was there was no sensation. Uktani and it taught nimtal shlasiyam meimachem mekarban that even without a sensation she still has to bring a carbon. It's a kashan shmuel. Shmuel says no sensation means no tumma. Mar says loy loylam daargish. Really, there was a sensation. Reimar gosh shama shama, but maybe it was a sensation from his organ that uh, was was inside that she wasn't able to feel the blood. That's the. Uh, so exactly the way we said before, whether it's a sensation, so far we have three distractions. We have the urine, we have the cloth, and we have the uh, relations. The, those are the three distractions. Okay. Tashima, come and listen. Comes out. Himos Vegas Bisha. The three doubts. Albasara, if it's on her body, suffix tummy, suffix tummy. We don't know if it's from her or from a insect tummy. She's tummy. Al chaluka, if it's on a garment, suffix tummy, suffix tummy. We don't know if it's from her or from the outside. It's tar. Magos besetes. When it comes to things that she touched, um, then halachacha right. Then you follow the majority. Majority means is the majority. We're talking about uh, a woman that doesn't really doesn't have a set cycle, and we don't know when she's tummy, when she's tar, how many time. We have to follow the majority of the days. Is she tummy most time or tar? My halachah right? What does it mean you follow the majority? Live, live. Is it not? If the majority of her days are tummy, then tmeya. Va'afogav. Even if she didn't have any sensation, we're making her tummy just because a lot of times she's tummy. Umar says, Light. That was an easy answer. If most of the days she sees with a sensation, then she's tummy. Because now we would say that she probably did have a sensation, but she didn't realize it. Now, this is because we don't have any. Um, don't have any uh, set time when she's supposed to see. So we'll say that we don't know when it came and, and if she has all day to feel it. Could be Ema Agashan because maybe she felt it. And she doesn't know about it. So this is a fourth sort of distraction, which is not an actual distraction. It's just that because she doesn't know when it comes, she has, she, it could be that there was a sensation, but it was so small that she didn't recognize, she didn't notice it. This messes up a lot of um, leniencies that you would have by a kesson. By a stain, you would say, well, she didn't feel it, she's stuck. But there's always the issue of maybe I could a lot of But this is, this is less of a, of a, of a issue and it could be this svara is only like a rabbinic svara that would say that she's tame because of and maybe she sensed it but she didn't recognize it okay Amar Mar let's do it Master to it this is re-quoting re the, the Braisa Say Amar Mar. Al Basara Safik Tami Safik Tar is Tami. 
if it's on our flesh, we don't know if it's tummy or if it's tar, we say that it's tummy. Al chaluka suffik tummy suffik tar tar. But if it's on our clothing, we don't know if it's tummy or tar, we say that it's tar. There's a difference between her body and her clothing. What's the case? If it's below the waist, then al chaluka my tar. Then why is it tar on her clothing? We said a stain on her clothing is is tummy if it's below the waist. We sit below the waist, the stain over there should be tummy. If it's above the waist, then I'll besar on my tummy. Then why on her flesh is it tummy? Because what you, you just made a distinction here that any doubt on clothing is to her, any doubt on her body is tummy. One second. We are, was it found? Because if the contrast is only clothing versus body, then we're not going to say the position of where it was found is also there. That's, there's only one variable, clothing and body. So, but it was taught in the Mishnah. She finds blood on her body above. If it's not opposite that private area, then she's tar. The Gemara gives two, two possible answers. Three possible answers. If you want, we can say it's below. If you want, we can say it's above. It goes back to it's. If we say that it's below, what happened was she was passing by the market where they slaughter. If it's on her body, then obviously. If it came from the outside, from the chickens that they were slaughtering, so then it should have been found on her. Why is all her clothing uh, perfectly clean? And the only area that's not uh, clean is on her leg. Well, her legs were exposed. So it should have, what happened to all her clothing? If the blood came from outside, it should be on her clothing also. It's only on, on, her, on her leg. So it must be that it's from her. Al Chaluka. If she finds it on her garment, the <coughs> alma, so it must have come from outside. The imi gufasa, because if it came from her body, al basarmi by lesh the Why is only her dress uh, have blood on it, but her legs are perfectly uh, there's no cl- uh, perfectly clean. There's no blood on the legs. It must be that it came from the outside. Ibai say mechagal amata. Do you can say that it was from above? Uh, it's uh, above the the waist. Going to this dakra, she was doing. Um, Flips. It was exercise, aerobics, like jumping, flipping over. So it goes like this Al Basara, if it's on her flesh, Vada Migufasa, it came from her. Bimi Al Masai, because if it came from the outside, Al Chaluke by Lesh, because why isn't it on her garment? Al Chaluke, if it's, if it's on her garment, then Mi Al Masai, then it came from the outside. Bimi Gufasa, because if it came from her, and then it should have been found on her, on her body. And what we just did was, we said that it is possible for a stain above the waist to be tummy in a case of if she, if she was doing this aerobics. Tani miyas. Oh, she walked by chickens. If she walked by chickens, um, then the it, she would be tummy only if the blood was oh, on her body and, and but it's below the waist. Above the waist would only be if to with aerobics. Tani mias albasar suffik tummy suffik tar is tummy. We learned that if it's on her body, we don't know where it's from. We say that she's tummy. What happened to the hargasha? This is interesting because we answered this before. No, actually, we only before we only said Agashavalavadaita was right was with this other woman. Vaitanan was also taught in the Mishnah, Araya Kesim al Basara can make a base of tarfa tmeya. She sees a kesim on her flesh. If it's opposite that area, then she's tummy, Bafagabla Yagishi, even though she didn't have any sensation. It's Kashan Shmuel. This whole thing, all of this is all Kashan Shmuel. He didn't understand what Shmuel was saying. Shmuel was saying that she's tarim in Atayra, but she's tami midir All of this, everything that we've just answered, um, is not necessarily 
uh, what, the way we need to answer because it could be that she is Tame from the Rabbanan within all of those questions. The Vashi Amar Shmuel who Dama Kreb Nechemia. The Vashi says that Shmuel holds like Kreb Nechemia. The Tanana was taught that Nechemia and Mekol Dabash and Mekabel Tuma. Nechemia says anything that's not Mekabel Tuma and Mekabel Ksamim also can't uh, receive a Ketsam like this. So the ground, Shmuel said she sat on the ground. And then she stands up and there's blood on the ground. Well, the ground doesn't become tummy. So therefore, the whole gzair of ksamim is because we say the blood is on a vessel that's tummy. And we're going to consider the vessel tummy. Therefore, we're going to consider her tummy. But if the vessel isn't tummy, because it's not a vessel, it's the ground, then we don't have to go back and contaminate her. There's no, there's no, um, there's no issue of being consistent here. Because the ksamim was like a being consistent. If the vessel that the blood is found on is tummy, then she also has to be tummy, or else it doesn't make sense. So bishlem ala ravashi, according to ravashi, hainud kamer karka. That's why we said it was the ground. Ala rav yermi amayeria karka filo glimanami. Why do we say that she sat on the ground? The same malacha would apply if she sat on the garment. That she's tahar min atayra, and she's tummy midir abana. The gemara says, let me buy you tummy. You're right. But what he's saying is even more. Not only loimi by glima the loimi of that shafter, maybe a garment wouldn't, he wouldn't have been able to, he didn't check properly. Biklami mealmi also, that maybe it came from outside. Alafila karka the mib that shafter, but even, but the ground that you do check properly. Biklami migufa asa, that we say that it came from her, tar, nevertheless she star. The ground, before she would have sat down, she, she would have checked it properly, that area. And now that she stands up, there's no other choice but to say that it's from her. And nevertheless, she's still tar. That's the chiddush. Okay. Let's leave it here. Thank you. Thank you.